We went from having no names announced for the WWE Hall of Fame a month out to having four names announced in the span of a week. And they are all very deserving of recognition. Triple H got his hands on the Hall of Fame this year, and he is making full use of that power. The first name announced on Monday was Paul Heyman, who is more than deserving of the honor. In the past, he has said he didn't want to go in yet because his career wasn't over and he still had a lot left to do. But this being in Philadelphia this year, it's, it's the right place to do it. This is a man who got his foot in the door as a photographer. He's making 50 bucks working for Vince McMahon's father. There's a great photo of him posing with Lou Albano and Fred Blassie and the Grand Wizard backstage, probably at Madison Square Garden, when Heyman was only 15 years old. He was hustling even back then. And then he would go on to become a better manager than all three of them, in my opinion. In WCW, he led the Dangerous Alliance. He managed a whole bunch of legends before they were legends. Steve Austin, Rick Rude, Arn Anderson. He managed The Undertaker back when he was Mean Mark Callis. And then years later in WWE, they paired him with Brock Lesnar, and they became one of the best manager-wrestler duos of all time. I, I think it's either got to be Heyman and Lesnar or Bockwinkle and Heenan in the AWA. It's got to be one of those two. After Brock, he managed Big Show when he was the WWE champion. He managed Kurt Angle. He managed CM Punk. And now Roman Reigns. But before those guys, he got into promoting. And he transformed Eastern Championship Wrestling into Extreme Championship Wrestling, which was hugely influential on the two bigger companies, WWE and WCW. They would often copy from ECW. Uh, they signed a lot of ECW talent. The use of tables, right? Which The tables now are more over than a lot of the people on the roster. Okay, That was popularized, at least in this country, by ECW. Uh, before Steve Austin was drinking beers on TV, the Sandman was doing it in ECW. Uh, before WWE, you know, found its attitude and made all that money in the late 90s, ECW was all about attitude. If you don't think they didn't borrow from them and lift from them, you're out of your mind. Uh, they got on pay-per-view, just like the big players did. They got national TV, just like the big players did. They got their own video game, just like the big players did. They got all these things, but they just were not able to make enough money to stay alive. For all the things you could say about Paul Heyman, his creative mind, and, and, and that aspect of his career, Paul Heyman as a businessman, that didn't work out too well. Uh, the legacy, though, of that one independent promotion, it's amazing. It still lives on 30 years later. To this day, you still have ECW reunions going on practically every year. And if that's where his career would have ended, he would still be a slam dunk candidate for the Hall of Fame. But his career continued. It's almost like there's a first half and a second half of his career. And not only did it continue as a manager or, or an advocate or a wise man or whatever he wants to call himself, but he did commentary. I mean, he did commentary in the, in the early 90s too, but he did commentary again. He was the general manager on SmackDown. He was a writer for SmackDown during one of its greatest periods. And years later, Vince McMahon appointed him the executive director for Monday Night Raw think he did that for about a year before he got fired. <laughs> Told him, you're doing a great job, and then he fired him anyway. But he kept him on as a talent. Because, you know, I know that if I think somebody is doing a great job, I fire them from that job. Because, of course, that makes sense. Uh, but I would say this man has filled every position there is to fill in wrestling except referee. But he was technically a referee because he counted the winning fall for RVD in his match with John Cena at one night stand. So... Technically, he did that too. He's done it all. Heyman doesn't like to refer to himself as a manager. He used to call himself, when he was with Brock, he would call himself an advocate. And he's come, come up with all these different terms, advocate and wise man and special counsel, anything but manager. There's a reason why he does that. The reason he does that is because he once said that he can't be the greatest manager of all time. Because Bobby the Brain Heenan is already the greatest manager of all time. And he does not want to be the second best manager. But he could be the best advocate. And that's why he does it. And he's right. He's right about one thing. On the list of all-time best managers, Bobby Heenan is number one. And then I have Paul Heyman at number two and Jim Cornette at number three. Philadelphia being the birthplace of extreme, it's only appropriate for him to go in this year. And I think he realized that, you know, it's Triple H's first year with full control over the Hall of Fame. Uh, and he was talking about this to TMZ the other day. 
Triple H now controls the Hall of Fame, wants him to go in. It's Philadelphia. It's the 40th WrestleMania. He saw the writing on the wall. He relented. He said, okay, I'll go in. But he's very adamant. Like, he is nowhere close to being done. He, he, he said that he looks at this more as a Rookie of the Year award than a Lifetime Achievement award. Because he's just getting started. So he, he's made that very clear. Uh, as far as who inducts him. There's been a lot of questions about who's going to induct him, who's going to put him in the Hall of Fame. I like CM Punk for that spot. He's somebody that he managed, they worked together. Uh, Heyman was always an advocate for him, even behind the scenes when he was a lot younger. Heyman was an advocate for Punk when they started ECW as a brand in WWE. And it goes all the way back to that awful uh, Extreme Elimination Chamber match they did at December to Dismember, which was the end. I mean, that was it. I mean, Heyman and Vince on the, on the plane after that show had a big blow up, and that was it. Heyman was gone. He was fired, and, or he I don't remember if he was fired or he left, but he was gone after that for like six or seven years. And a lot of it stemmed from the fact that ideas that he had for what he wanted to do with that ECW brand were not going to happen under Vince McMahon. He had his own vision. He wanted Bobby Lashley to be the ECW champion. Heyman wanted CM Punk to be the guy. He had all these ideas for CM Punk. So even back then, we're talking 2006, and maybe even before that, 2005, when he was in developmental, Heyman was advocating for CM Punk. So there's a relationship there and a respect there that goes back for a very long time. And Punk obviously has the gift of gab. You know, you put a live mic in front of CM Punk. He's very good at using it. So I think that he would give a great speech for Paul Heyman. I could also see it being someone like Steve Austin, who has his own ties to Paul Heyman in the past. Because WWE is probably going to want a big name for that spot. And I don't know that Heyman would even want an ECW guy to do the induction, because then it just becomes an ECW thing. They're already in Philly... Now I have to have an ECW guy, have to have a, a Bully Ray or a Tommy Dreamer or an RVD do the induction. Tommy Dreamer already said he doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want to do it. He doesn't think he should be the one to do it. So I don't know that they want an ECW personality to be the one inducting him. His career was so much more than just ECW. And you know that Triple H is in charge now of the Hall of Fame because not only... Is Heyman going in, but we are getting our first Joshi induction into the Hall of Fame. Per ESPN, Bull Nakano will be inducted this year. Now he needs to get the Jumping Bomb Angels in there next year. She started wrestling, she was only 15 years old. Won her first title at the age of 17. And later on, she became the first ever CMLL Women's Champion. After that, she had a short run in WWE when they decided to revive their women's division. And as far as I can remember, we had like two or three wrestlers in the women's division. It was pretty much Bull Nakano and Alundra Blaze, and that's all I remember. I don't remember. I mean, I know later on they brought in Aja Kong, later in 95, and there was a match on Raw. You know, Aja Kong, she did the spinning back fist, and my God, I mean, she, she broke the nose of her opponent, she was so stiff, she was a monster in there. And I think it was after that that Vince McMahon said, you know what, we're not doing this anymore. And that was the end of that. That was the end of the women's division. But Alundra Blaze, she absolutely should be the one to induct Bull Nakano. Bull Nakano beat Alundra to win the women's title before dropping it back to her months later. They had a match on Raw. And then she got arrested for cocaine possession, and that was the end of her WWE run. She ended up in WCW. She feuded with Alundra there. Uh, she Well, as Medusa. But they feuded again. Injuries led to her retirement in 1997. She was only 29 years old. And, you know, most of her success came before her time in WWE. And it, it feels like her career was very short when you consider the fact, oh my God, she, she wasn't even 30 years old when she retired. But you got to remember, you know, everything is, is relative here. She debuted at 15. Most people don't debut at 15. Rey Mysterio debuted when he was, I think, 13 or 14. Most people don't debut when they're that young. So she wrestled for almost 15 years. I wouldn't call that a short career. But she is regarded as one of the all-time great women's wrestlers, so that is a very deserving induction. And this year's tag team induction goes to Mike Rotunda and Barry Windham, the U.S. Express, who defended the tag team titles at the very first WrestleMania which is why they're going in, plays into the 40 years of WrestleMania theme. 
For Wyndham, it's his second induction. He already went in once as a member of the Four Horsemen in 2012. I always figured if Rotunda went in as part of a tag team, it would be Money Incorporated with Ted DiBiase. Uh, He also worked as a producer for WWE for 13 years until he got swept up in those mass COVID releases a few years ago. They lost the titles at the first WrestleMania to Nikolai Volkov and the Iron Sheik, but they won them back from them a few months later. Then they dropped them to Greg Valentine and Brutus Beefcake. Wyndham walked out on the company, which pretty much screwed Rotunda over. But both men were eventually brought back. Rotunda did the IRS gimmick. Wyndham came back as the Widowmaker. If you don't remember this, if you don't know what the Widowmaker was, you are not alone. He did not last long with that. But they used to come out together for their entrance to Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA. Real American, though. Which famously became the anthem for Hulk Hogan and, in my opinion, remains the best song in wrestling history. Was actually written for the U.S. Express. That was not written for Hulk Hogan. But not long after the wrestling album came out in 85, Wyndham left the company. And the U.S. Express was no more. So they decided to give it to Hogan. Because Hogan used to come out to Eye of the Tiger. But it worked out because they weren't going to be able to use actual music anymore. They had to get away from it. Hulk was their American hero now, and so he got real American and the rest is history. Rotunda is married to Wyndham's sister. That's where Bray Wyatt got the name Wyndham from, from his Uncle Barry. And you gotta wonder, with Bray's dad and uncle going into the Hall of Fame this year, they're saving a Bray Wyatt announcement for last. A Fightful is saying The Rock has had input into this year's Hall of Fame class and that his grandmother, Leah Maivia, is one of the names being considered for an induction. WWE is telling them, though, that The Rock does not have input into the Hall of Fame. So if The Rock's grandmother happens to go in this year, then I guess we'll have our answer. 